Hello everyone, this is 3x and in this video I'm going to be creating a stylized uh, vintage cash register. So I found this image online. Uh, there's a website that uh, shares like old uh, vintage antique um, props and whatnot. Uh, I think I'll put a link in the video description if I can find the website again because uh, I just found it by well I was looking for some references and just like things for inspiration so I found these images in that website um, again I'm gonna place a link in the video description but anyway uh, the point here is that I'm going to be making this cash register uh, but I'm gonna make it so that it's uh, more stylized and not necessarily based on the um, well I mean it is based on the uh, image but I'm going to make it so that it uh, has more vibrant colors and uh, and it's a lot more cleaner as well and just overall make it so that it looks a bit more stylized and in this case what I did I used a pretty much edge extrusion if you will that's I guess uh, the name for that um, so I used a cylinder deleted parts of it and then extruded the extra pieces that I needed and then I made it into a um, watertight uh, model after that but for the most part I'm going to be using mostly uh, as always geometric shapes uh, I find that keeping things simple is always um, it always makes things easier if you keep things really simple by using just geometric shapes especially when you're just getting started uh, you want to keep things really simple you just want to get an idea of what the model is going to look like and then you can come in and add more details so that's essentially what i'm doing with this one so i created the main shape i'm also going to use a tool to rename these and i'm also going to lower the uh, geo yeah, and just get rid of some of the uh, geometry that's not really adding anything to the model. And then finally I'm going to do UVs. And then for the... Um, I guess for the buttons, uh, those are going to duplicate and have them overlapping so that the, they use the exact same UV space. But then I'm going to offset some of them so that I can um, have different colors on them. So I'm going to offset some of those buttons so that I can actually have a different texture on those. And mostly just on the top part. Everything else I'm just going to keep it overlapping. And here I'm just going to move those in. And I'm going to combine all the ones that are just overlapping. And make sure I name everything correctly. And then what I do for high polys here is I'm going to just duplicate the uh, low poly model group. And then uh, rename all the models underscore high. And then from there, I'm just going to, for the most part, just add bevels and preview also in a sub D mode. Uh, remember, if you press three on my in Maya, you can just uh, preview sub D, and you can also export in sub D mode as well. Pretty much, Maya just uh, subdivides the model before exporting. So that's what I did in this case. And then in Substance Painter, I just loaded a low poly mod, and I baked uh, using my high poly. I'll use the uh, 3DX stylized material that I always use in my videos. It's going to be a link in the video description if you are interested in learning how to make it. But anyway, here I'm just going to be creating a few different layers and I'm going to start to change the color of different sections of the model. And a lot of the details I'm just going to add by um, I just essentially painting those in with a little bit of height on them. For this section in particular, I think um, 
I would actually recommend making your UVs straight for this particular section here, just so that you can actually just paint the, the, the lines straight in the UV editor. In this case I didn't do that, which is why I had to kind of paint them on a, a little bit of an angle. But to make life easier, I would recommend uh, keeping those UVs straight, just to get that just make that a little bit easier. And for the panels, I'm just going to paint those in again using a layer that has height on it. And I also enabled symmetry on that section just so that I don't have to paint those uh, on each side. And I can just use symmetry. And I can just, after that, just disable it and do my changes. And here I'm going to use a normal map for adding more details. Uh, essentially for the screen that comes with this uh, register. I'm just gonna add it. And looking at it now, I think it would have been better if I modeled that in instead of just painting this with a normal map. Um, mainly because you would have gotten a little bit more detail out of that. And in this case, since it's just a normal map, it is a little bit flat, especially if you view it uh, from different angles. If you see it from far away, I think it's not an issue, but if you do get close to it, I think it does lose um, uh, the uh, the effect. And it would look better if it was actually modeled in instead of just a normal map. And then I'm just going to start painting the buttons. I'm just going to give them uh, different colors. And some of these are overlapping, so so they will look the same. And I'm just going to use uh, the text tool here in Substance just to add numbers to them. This was probably the most time consuming uh, thing that I did here was to just add the text and the numbers. Not going to show me adding all of them in this video because it's just pretty much the same process using the text tool and then just moving them in the uv editor essentially and then just changing the actual text And then I just wanted to play around with the actual color of the main uh, body. And like I said, I want to keep this stylized. So I want to make it so that it looks, um, you know, usually to make things stylized, it's, it's a good idea to just kind of give it more vibrant and clean colors. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Just kind of playing around with some of the colors and to see uh, what it looks like. And I try to uh, separate the colors based on where the uh, panels are. And then finally, I'm going to make a layer with uh, what I call stylized uh, damage. Uh, essentially, it's, some, it's just some, some clean, essentially, it's just a few clean, you know, like cracks and just damage at the bottom of it. Alrighty, so here is what it looks like in Mamoset 2 back. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, and hopefully, I'll see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment.
The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything, so click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.